He was as much the prophet of grief as the prophet of mercy. He was as much the prophet of ordeal as the prophet of affection. The prophet of distress and at the same time the prophet of compassion. He was not well understood, exiled from his city. Those who believed him were killed and his friends were denigrated. One day, his friends, distressed and exhausted, asked him, O oh, messenger of God, will you not curse our enemies? His eyes filled with tears, and he answered, I was not sent for the purpose of cursing, but as a universal source of mercy. Universal Mercy The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His Compassion بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول Indeed there has come unto you, O mankind, an apostle from among yourselves. Heavily weighs upon him the thought that you might suffer in the life to come. Full of concern for you is he, and full of compassion and mercy towards the believers. Praise to God Almighty, who created man and did not leave us without a protector, a guide, or a companion. Praise to God Almighty, who made man his representative on earth, and sent us prophets so that they might tell us the mysteries of this world and prepare us for the hereafter. Praise to God Almighty, who gave worshippers responsibility towards him, and sent prophets from among us to set examples. Praise to God Almighty, who said, No doubt God has created Adam in the form of Rahman, the most gracious, and sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to teach us the mercy, compassion, and affection that we need. We start in the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful. The Blessed Prophet described God's compassion as follows. God divided mercy into 100 portions. He spared 99 portions for himself and sent down the remaining one part to the earth. It is thanks to this one portion that the creatures of the earth treat one another compassionately. One day, he saw a woman who was running among the crowd. She was searching for her child, and when she found him, she hugged him with great tenderness and love. The eyes of the Prophet of Mercy filled with tears, and he said, Would you ever believe that this woman would throw her child into a fire? You should know that God's mercy for his creatures is much greater than this woman's mercy for her child. The God who said, My compassion surpasses my wrath, would certainly not leave his creatures alone in this world. He would send a universal prophet of mercy. He was such a prophet that he put saving the faith of humanity ahead of his own life. Praise to the God of Muhammad who introduced us to Muhammad's compassion. To truly comprehend it, you must come to know it well. To learn of him, let us listen to the words of children, orphans, women, the poor, ill and elderly people, mothers and animals. Let us listen to his words in order to understand him as a guide who introduced our God to us. 
First and foremost, he was compassionate to children. When the Prophet of Compassion saw a child, his face filled with joy and affection. When he met children, he would greet them, ask them how they were, and answer their endless questions with great patience. For children, the Prophet's return to Medina was an occasion to celebrate. He would let the first two children who welcomed him ride his camel. He would kiss his grandchildren and caress their heads. One day, a Bedouin told him, We do not kiss our children. He replied, If God has taken mercy away from your hearts, what can I do? He encouraged parents to show their affection to their children by kissing them. He said, for each kiss, you will be granted a grade from heaven, and the period between each grade is 500 years. The Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet of Compassion, was raised an orphan. Therefore he knew that a lonely child without a mother or a father would be in great need of affection. To those who protected orphans and gave them shelter in their homes, he gave the good tidings, I will be beside you in heaven like the two fingers of my hand. In pre-Islamic Arab society, people saw girls as a source of shame and buried their daughters alive. The Prophet of Compassion protected those girls who were oppressed, treated as inferiors, and killed. The Prophet said, God will reward with heaven those who have two daughters and who do not kill, demean, or favor their sons to them. These words indicate his compassion, not only towards girls, but also toward parents raising children. Sometimes he would perform the ritual worship, namaz, in front of his companions and wanted to prolong the duration of the namaz. However, when he heard a child crying, he would end the namaz rapidly, knowing that his mother would be worried. He considered serving mothers as a kind of worship when he said, Heaven is under the feet of mothers. He encouraged Muslim men to treat their women kindly. When women rode camels, he was worried that their delicate bodies might be injured. Thus, he did not allow the camels to go quickly. He knew very well that treating one's parents with kindness was a praiseworthy act in the presence of God. He said he would be surprised if one who looked after one or both of his parents in their old age were not able to go to heaven. The Prophet of Compassion was sent to put an end to the sorrow of a sad world. Each man, each destitute person, each sick person, each lonely person, and the elderly were worlds in themselves. The Prophet asked young people to respect the elderly and urged old people to forgive the mistakes of the young. He once said that the angels would pray for one who spent the night with a sick person. He usually evaluated the day in the evenings, questioning his compassion. Did you caress the head of an orphan today? Did you visit a sick person? Did you visit a family who was grieving? The needy people in society, such as the poor and those who had to beg, were among those whom Muhammad, peace be upon him, protected particularly. He would often advise his wife Aisha, saying, O oh Aisha, you should love the poor. Establish close relations with them so that God will take you near him on the day of judgment.
Never let a needy person go away from your door. Sometimes, when the Prophet did not have anything to give to the needy, he would allow people to give money to the poor in his name, as a debt. He advised his companions to relieve those who were in debt or in need of money. He praised those who behaved this way and promised that God would save these compassionate people from their troubles on the Day of Judgment. He extended his compassion to his enemies and those who had waged war against him and been taken prisoners. He forgave a woman who had attempted to poison him. Upon the death of a troublemaker who slandered his wife and led to discord among Muslims, the Prophet sent his own shirt to serve as a shroud and did not let the children of this man feel any shame or distress because of their father. When he conquered Mecca, he forgave the Meccans, just as the Prophet Joseph forgave his brothers who had betrayed him and those who exiled him from the city. He said, there will be no self-righteousness or condemnation of you today. Since he was compassionate even to the worst of human beings, his compassion extended to the animal kingdom as well. He was compassionate to all animals, from the most domesticated to the fiercest. He accepted cats as part of the household. If he saw a cat drinking water from a pitcher as he was taking ablutions, he would not disturb the cat, but rather let it drink the water and go its way. One day, the Prophet talked about the compassion of a sinful woman towards a thirsty dog. The woman saw a dog near a well. The dog was panting from thirst. She put her shoe inside the well, filled it with water, and gave it to the dog. God forgave all sins of this woman. While the Prophet was traveling with his companions, he saw a bird whose young had been stolen from their nest, flapping its wings hopelessly. He felt great sorrow and ordered that the young birds be put back into the nest. When he saw that some Bedouins were setting fire to ants' nests, he scolded them, saying, Only God, the owner of fire, has the right to cause pain by means of fire. The examples of his compassion are innumerable. At this point, let us again hear what the Holy Quran, which contains the most beautiful of words, says. Indeed, there has come unto you, O mankind, an apostle from among yourselves. Heavily weighs upon him the thought that you might suffer in the life to come. Full of concern for you is he, and full of compassion and mercy towards the believers. Oh, <laughs>